Welcome to Success From Scratch, episode number 53, and my special guest, Kelly Stubbs, Mentor of the Year. Thank you. Hey, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for, thanks for having me. So what was it like when you were on stage, actually not being on stage, but hearing that you were named Mentor of the Year? It was, it was very surprising. I wasn't on stage. I wasn't able to be there. We'd had a family trip planned for months, right? Um, and so I wasn't able to be there. But they, they did, they did let me know. They called and uh, sent some messages. So it was very exciting, very surprising, yeah. very humbling. Um, it, it was, it was very exciting. Yeah, super exciting, and even more exciting knowing what you went through. So uh, ha had a baby, mm -hmm. had a significant health issue with a back mm -hmm. surgery, mm -hmm. and had to overcome a lot. Sure. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, as I'm sure everybody is aware, they if they haven't had kiddos in their family, they've known people who have. It's just very all-encompassing, but um, it it still allowed me to focus on my mentees um, and help them through whatever they needed. It was um, it's a very um, flexible program um, that I can kind of mold and and develop um, as is needed for my ment mentees as well as myself and kind of fit everything in um, all together. It was, it, was a, it was a good fit for right. what we were going through. Yeah, for personally. what you're going through is a perfect mm -hmm. fit. Yeah. But was it easy? Oh, no, I don't think anything's ever easy. Yeah. Um, but it's fun. I, I truly enjoy the, the mentor side of my business is truly one of my favorite parts of, of my personal business. Yeah. Um, I, I enjoy that and I think it makes it easier for me um, because I do enjoy it so much. Yeah. What about it makes it your favorite? What what joy do you, what satisfaction do you get I from like, mentoring? I like seeing people get it. Um, mm -hmm. I like seeing, what I what is fun for me is when we're having maybe some one-on-one -on -one conversations um, and we meet every week and so maybe in one of our weekly meetings, somebody that had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with about something jump and jumps in to answer somebody else's question and they regurgitate a lot of what we talked about the week before mm -hmm. and that's so cool like right. it, it happened a couple weeks ago and and she texted me after the meeting and she's like i'm so sorry i didn't mean to overstep but i was like i was so excited that she was able to do that and everything she said was was on point and right. that kind of stuff makes me excited because yeah. then they're then they get together and they um, they kind of pair up and um help each other with you know strengths and weaknesses and um it's 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 fun for me to watch yeah and what about the joy or the, the, the their first accomplishment? You know, either their first appointment or their first contract or their first sale. What about those things? How does how does that? Oh, absolutely. Especially um, for folks. Sometimes folks come into the business and they've got they've got appointments or they've got things lined up. People waiting for them to get mm -hmm. started. But other times, folks they don't have anything, and so they they hit the pavement every day. They're um, They've got their system set up. They've got their you know things that we've we've taught them that JPAR has taught them that I've taught them, yeah. um, or kind of encourage them to follow through with. And, and when they first get out there, it truly is exciting, and we try and recognize that every yeah. week you know as we meet. And so yeah. folks that are are still getting up to speed, you know, they can hear that yeah, well, so and so's only been here for you know three weeks, and they've got three appointments, and you know, blah 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 blah, whatever whatever that situation might be. Yeah. Um, it's. It's I, encouraging for everybody. I love it. And I've heard you said multiple times weekly, meeting weekly, that discipline mm -hmm. of weekly, not letting things get you know too yeah. far out beside yeah. the week. What are some of the key things that you see of those you've mentored, those that are more successful mm -hmm. you know, versus those that are maybe average or mm -hmm. struggling? What are the traits that you see that make that difference? Um, folks who kind of take responsibility for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, we all have excuses. We're all busy. We all have families. We all have other responsibilities besides our business. Um, but folks who don't let those other things be excuses for them, those folks are more successful. Um, it's a, there's a difference between making excuses and making choices, I think. Um, I think if you're making a choice to not have those excuses, those folks I see as being successful, not just in the program, but long term yeah. for their business. You know, Kelly, each episode kind of has a moment, and I think you just said it. What was that quote about excuses versus choices? I don't know. <laughs> it <laughs> what just it, came Whatever out. it was, we're going to capture it because it was amazing. Oh, we'll thanks. capture it. But you said, okay. you know, everyone has, there's a difference between excuses and choices. Right. Right? Right. There is. There right. is. And for all of us, yes, there's a difference between excuses and choices. Choices. And, and, yeah. and you have to decide what, what 
path you're going to go down. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and so what you've discovered is those that are wildly more successful than those that are average mm -hmm. or not are those that are decide to make the choices mm -hmm. even though they don't feel like it exactly. or whatever excuse they have. Exactly, exactly. And what a perfect example. You know, had a child, had major back surgery, you know, the things that you were going through sure. but kept your dedication uh, to your uh, mentees. Um, what are some of the common challenges that they bring to you? What's like the, the theme, uh, if there's a theme amongst? Uh, so a lot of times, and I felt this way too, even starting at JPAR coming from a different brokerage. Um, so whether they're coming from a different brokerage or whether they're brand new to the industry, um, I like to describe it as you're trying to drink water from a fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. You've got all this great technology, all these great programs that are just come use me, come come do this, come do this. And right. pretty soon it's analysis paralysis and then they don't know what to do. And mm -hmm. so they don't do anything at all. So they get paralyzed. They get paralyzed, right. exactly. So um, if they can get past that and we can kind of work through, well, just pick one. All you have to do right now is one. Just do that one thing. Let's work on that. Let's become good at that. And then we'll add another one. And right. then we'll, we'll add that to our, our routine, our, our yeah. time blocking, our, you know, whatever it might be. And... Um, and then they, then it becomes manageable, you know. Yeah. But if you try and do it all at the same time, then everybody struggles with it. You know, it's funny. This morning I was reading that quote about you know if you don't have a goal, any any path will get you there. Sure. You know, so what you're talking about is what's your goal, yeah. and then you can align to something. Sure. I learned a fact yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't fact checked it yet, so but something around 2.1 billion bits of data mm -hmm. of content are being created in the world every second. Huh. Think about it. All the content, not just at JPAR, all the tools that we have, but sure. beyond JPAR, all the things in the world that we're getting hit bombarded with. Mm -hmm. You know, buy this, think of this, oh, do sure. this, read this. Yeah. We're getting bombarded with content in today's world. So if we're not clear on the path and the goal, sure. we're going to be easily. Oh, sure. Sure. Uh, you know, instead of the uh, dog wagging the tail, the tail wagging the dog, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So. Uh, are there common struggles that you're able to help them break through? There really are. There, everybody has their unique situations, um, but the first and foremost, if we can get folks time blocking and if we can get them on a schedule to actually mm. get up and get dressed and work on a daily basis, right. then then I think that's that's half the battle for a lot of people. Right. Um, so then once they do that, then it's just, well, what do I do? And so I think it's important to get them out doing activities that are that they perceive to be realtor activities. Mm -hmm. um, let them do some of those things. Make sure that they're out um, previewing houses and um, attending trainings and things like that, but also not to get stuck behind their computer. It, it right. depends on the type of person they are, right? Sometimes right. folks are very comfortable behind their computer, and so they spend way too much time there. If they're more comfortable out with people, they spend way too much time at the coffee shop, at trainings, at happy hours, at you know oh, those things, it. right? So if we can kind of get them out of that, what they're used to, what they perceive real estate should be, and get them into actual tasks to, um, I call them money-making activities. I was just um, going to say money-making <laughs> money -making activities. Yeah, yeah. We think alike. Yeah, yeah. Get them into money-making activities. Right. Then, um, so that struggle that you see is the balance Absolutely. You know, maybe they're an extrovert, so they're always out networking, but then sure. they're not doing uh, the local market research that they need to do to be right. a hyper-local expert. Right. Or if they love being behind the computer, they may be an expert, but they're not meeting right. enough people. Right. Got it. If, if someone was coming new mm -hmm. into uh, the industry, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them? Um, to get plugged in, to not give up, um, to be honest and true to who they are. Um, I think sometimes we lose sight of why we're here, why we want to be here. Um, and if you remember who you are, remember why you're here, um, and you commit yourself to, to working, you know, this isn't an industry you can pop in and out of. This isn't right. a place where you can um, just not show up. I mean, you can, right. but then your business suffers. Well, the right? consequences it's, are you're broke. Sure. You know, it's sure. the industry. I, when I talk to people, it's the only industry where you wake up every morning unemployed. Sure. Absolutely. Every morning you wake <laughs> up unemployed, right? Right. And you got to do something about it. And when you start thinking about that, then yeah. you have a whole different perspective. Absolutely. Um, well, great. Well, any last minute words of wisdom for the audience before we wrap up this episode? Oh, goodness. Um, I think if you can be yourself, then your clients, you'll attract the clients that you should be attracting. Mm. Um, if you're yourself, then 
you surround yourself with like-minded people. Right. I think that that's important. Um, and if you work hard, you you know yeah. you, you put your mind to something and you do it and you commit to doing things, then I think anybody can be successful. Yeah. In, be yourself. In this be authentic. Absolutely. Work hard. And then I love your quote, which we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make this a quote. <laughs> you know, excuses are different than choices. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. That's absolutely. a great quote. Well, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for, thanks for sharing it, and congratulations on being named Mentor Thank of the you. Year. Thank you so much. Which is a great accomplishment, uh, particularly with everything you went through last year. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. And we'll see you soon on another episode of Success from Scratch.